स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया गुड मॉर्निंग सो वील बिगिन विथ रीडिंग ऑफ डेविड फिंचर्स सेवन 1995 movie starring Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt and Gwyneth Paltrow and of course Kevin Spacey. So we know how important he is. This is the tagline of Seven, uh, Seven Deadly Sins, Seven Ways to Die. Okay, so this is uh, the tagline but and then you have all those uh, Seven Deadly Sins enlisted on the poster. So uh, we are going to read Seven. Uh, in particular with reference to semiotics signs symbols and codes the enigmatic code and the cultural code and we have already looked at these codes in some detail what it's what is meant by the enigmatic code and what is a cultural code so can you just refresh what we were doing in the last class what is enigmatic code we looked at the picture of Vertigo, Vertigo and two women, yeah. uh, James uh, James Stewart flanked by two poses and two um, two looks rather of Kim Novak, the dark hair, the blonde. Okay. So uh, we, I said this is an uh, this is a good example of the enigmatic code. What were we talking about? Uh, setting a puzzle, something which for the audience or viewer should be solved versus some sort of an uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen. Good. So enigmatic code is all about setting a puzzle. So seven falls in the category of puzzle cinema. It's a cultural category also, cultural code. We'll see why. <coughs> These uh, horrifying images uh, in the title, in the cred uh, opening credit sequence of seven, mutilated fingers of uh, a dead body. So what is seven? Seven. Also, pay attention to the way uh, the producers and the filmmakers, uh, the makers of Seven, you, uh, wrote the title, designed the title, very enigmatically, with number seven as well inserted. So, giving it an economy of expression as well as uh, 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 conveying a certain kind of sign, a symbol to it. So, Seven is a study in sin. If you ask us, what is Seven all about? What is the movie all about? Seven is a study in sin. As someone was rightly pointing out just now, it is a thriller, it is a detective movie. The heroes are detectives as played by Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. It is a crime movie. After all, it is a movie where uh, there is a killer at large, a serial killer at large. So, it is a crime movie, it is a detective movie. At some level, it is also a film noir. We have been talking about film noir exploring the dark uh, undertones of someone's personality. So, it is a noir. It is also a horror. And what kind of horror? There is a genre of horror called the body horror. It is believed that in modern times, in our con contemporary times, the body is no longer sacred. It can be violated uh, by someone at any time. So, it could be during wars, it could be um, a mugging, it could be anything. And here in seven, you have a serial killer who delights in violating bodies. Um, just an aside, David Cronenberg, the Canadian filmmaker, is a master in body horror. If you have watched his movies like, um, can you give me some example, Eastern Promises or Videodrome, Existence, Crash, okay. all these movies are study, studies in body horror. So, body horror look, looks at fa uh, with fascination at mutilated bodies, okay. that is where horror comes from. 
So, uh, we know how 7 begins and how horribly it ends okay, with mutilated bodies, uh, body of someone you know. Okay, so, that is what we mean by body horror. The title uh, or number 7 is an index, it acts as an index. Index we know points out at something, but points out at what? Um, just number 7 can tell you that uh, God took 7 days to create the world. So, 7 is an important number. We also talk about 7 pillars of wisdom uh, symbolically. We also talk about 7 wonders of the world, 7 cardinal virtues, 7 sins, 7 colors of the rainbow and uh, uh, of course, you know detective Somerset in the movie has 7 days to go before his final retirement. So, um, this would uh, perhaps be of interest to you that uh, in spite of having a very huge star like Brad Pitt and uh, a reasonably big star like Morgan Freeman in the movie, 7 initially did not market itself as a Brad Pitt movie. What did it market itself as? Just the title, the study in sin because the makers felt this in the western world, this is catchy enough, this is a marketable enough commodity. So, they need not. So, um, I was reading uh, uh, some reviews of the movie, all very, uh, the movie was received extremely well. Okay. It has survived the test of time, it is a canonical movie. So, uh, initially when it was released, uh, people wondered that why in spite of having Brad Pitt, uh, the makers did not bother to put Brad Pitt on the posters and market it that way. Why 7? Because, uh, because of the fascination of the western world with the idea of sin. So, I draw your attention to the DVD cover. Okay. You can look at it, no Brad Pitt, no Gwyneth, only 7. Okay, and that is the way the DVD has been released. Um, look at this, the inside jacket of DVD, of this DVD and what does it appear to you like? Looks like a, a book. Yeah, it looks like a book, cover of a book. And why are books so important in the movie? Is the collection of notebooks, exactly. So, notebooks and books, there is a very integral, very vital scene in the movie which takes place in the library. Mm. Morgan Discover. Freeman trying to decipher the meaning of these murders okay, and we know what book he is reading. So, we will come to that. So, um, uh, Morgan Freeman uh, or Somerset as his character is called, he also refers to seven slain children in Dante's purgatory. Purgatory is a part in Dante's divine comedy. Of course, uh, now that we know the movie, uh, we know it is about 7 days in 7, uh, sorry 7 sins in 7 days. Uh, so, I asked you to watch the movie, how does it begin? I am sorry, I cannot show you the movie or the clipping here right now, but how does it begin? We will be getting ready, yeah, we will be putting yeah, on the a regular work day in Morgan Freeman's life. How does it begin? He is putting on his clothes, okay. he is very meticulously dressing up. Okay. What does it tell you about? So, those are little clues and signs about his character. What do they tell you about? He is very methodical. He is a prepared, he, he likes to be prepared, he is very thorough. It's a great brain. That's how uh, one of his superiors referred to him. That don't retire so soon. I mean, he wants to retire, and they say you are one of the greatest brains here. Okay. We know, and there's just seven days to go. So, um, Morgan Freeman, after all, you know, a great actor. But in 1995, we have had uh, glimpses of his greatness in films such as Driving Miss Daisy. It was an Oscar winning movie, uh, Shawshank Redemption and also he was uh, uh, Robin Hood's partner in Kevin Costner's 
the prince of thieves. So, we knew Morgan Freeman, you know the movie capitalizes on the Morgan Freeman persona and I am not talking about his more contemporary movies like the Dark Knight series, all these happened later after 7, but before 7 we had Shawshank Redemption, we had Driving Miss Daisy, we had the Prince of Thieves and what kind of character did he specialize in playing? wise person, the wise guy, okay, the not wise guy as in as a pejorative, but wise guy in a very positive way. He is a person who has wisdom, who the hero can depend on. Okay. So, therefore, uh, if the hero is Brad Pitt, uh, the young, good looking, hunky hero, you have the older, wiser Morgan Freeman. The movie has and let me stress it very uh, emphatically that movie has no interest in the color of his skin. Seven is not about racism at all, it is just that we have a black actor doing a great role, a great job of it, otherwise there is no importance as such to his race, to the color of his skin. Okay. Opening scene, key connotations, we have been looking at connotations and denotations, remember? So, connotations, uh, when the movie opens and we know that Morgan Freeman very meticulously getting dressed up, getting ready for the day, we see road signs at the beginning, signs. So, films fascination, preoccupation with signs continues, David Fincher is a maker who is fascinated by the system of signs, zodiac. Um, the external sound. Now, uh, which city is it set in? Does not mention any. Does not mention, it is just any metropolis. Okay. And what happens in metropolis is according to 7? Crank. Okay. So, when we are talking about film Noah the other day, we all talked about, we all agreed that film Noah is uh, um, more often than not set in big cities, sometimes even in suburb, suburbs and sometimes even in rural areas like the postman always rings twice, but not always. Okay. So, set a metropolis, unnamed metropolis, could be any city. The city sounds at the beginning, so we have cars honking, neighbors making some kind of sounds, etcetera, etcetera. And how, notice how the make, the filmmaker contrasts those external sounds with Somerset's internal uh, world, the internal, the inner space of Somerset's being. So, it is very calm, it is very quiet. While he is, he lives in calmness and quietude, you hear all these city noises outside. What, what are those signs? What is the filmmaker trying to tell you here? In spite of the chaos outside, he is still able to find some moments of peace within himself. That is the kind of character, because see he is a world weary character, we recognize that. He has seen too much, he is sick of the crime of the crimes that he has been witnessing throughout his professional life, but still he has been able to uh, retain some semblance of sanity. That is because it comes from within, the calmness comes from within. That is an important feature of Morgan Freeman's character in 7 and this is completely juxtaposed with always on the edge hero Brad Pitt. Okay. So, um, we also see in the beginning opening se sequence the chess set in the foreground that, that says tells you a lot about I mean a man who is very, um, who is quite an expert in the game of chess, okay. he is an intellectual, we are given certain signs and clues, okay. it, it may not necessarily be so, but the filmmakers um, what they do to uh, emphasize on someone's mind, they surround the room with books perhaps they sound the room with uh, a so called intellectual game like 
a set of uh, you know tests. Then you have metronome, remember metronome in the beginning of the movie. What does he do? He sets the metronome and excludes the sounds which are taking place outside. So, metronome dissolves sort of uh, the sounds that are emanating from the outside. What does it tell you about Somerset? He is someone who can uh, uh, take control of things, okay, if he wants to. And that is his character, that is the way his character is, is established. At one point, when the first murder occurs and uh, um, Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman visit the scene of crime and Brad Pitt never stops talking, there is always a hubbub. Yep. And then Somerset at one point cannot take it anymore and he says, will you please be quiet. Okay. He wants, he can, he knows he cannot control everything, but things that he can control, he does control. And calm and peace is something that he requires. So, uh, um, at one uh, level, seven zero can also be Morgan Freeman, because he is the most identifiable character in the movie. Um, Opening credit, wonderfully done. Okay, if you have not uh, watched the movie, watch it again and just watch the first 10 and the last 10 minutes of the movie. You will get a hang of it. So, um, opening credit uh, is a montage. You know montage, quick cutting between two different or a couple of different acts going on. So, you have Doe and who is Doe? John Doe, the serial killer. We do not see his face for a very long time, a major star playing John Doe and we do not get to see him for a very long period of time. Okay, that is interesting. Now, uh, Doe's work and when it goes on, uh, we see close ups of Doe's hands and his handiwork. So, uh, writings on the notebook, stitching bodies, peeling of skin from his fingers, not, so that not to uh, leave fingerprints, yeah, using scissors, so things, you know, which require dexterous use of hands. So, therefore, at the begin, in the beginning of the movie, we saw uh, a very close up shot of hands, mutilated fingers, but hands are important. And those work is accompanied by the nine inch nails, the soundtrack is closer. You take me closer to God, that is the closing line of that song. And which is important because nine inch nails were fascinated with another serial killer, Charles Manson. Okay. And initially, this song, song or soundtrack was recorded in Charles Manson's house. So, nine inch nails, the group was extremely close to a notorious real life serial killer Charles Manson. Somerset's world on the other hand is contrasted with Doe's. Now, why Doe and why Somerset? Why are we comparing the two? One is an out and out good guy. They are both very methodical characters. Both extremely methodical, okay, both extremely intellectual. Brad Pitt Mills character, he does not come anywhere close to these people. Okay. Intellectually, he is uh, uh, just not there. Okay. So, uh, the entire mind game is between Somerset and John Doe. Therefore, it is interesting to note that uh, John Doe's handiwork is matched with 9 inch nail soundtrack, cacophonic sound, okay. lots of sounds, remixes, lots of uh, kind, uh, um, number of kind sounds mixed up there, whereas Morgan's song is Bach's uh, air on a G string. So it's all about calm, quietude, stability. So the enigmatic code that we were looking at, what is seven? What is so important about the title? Number seven. And how is the myth of the seven deadly sins 
used in plot development. If you remember, the killer at one point surrenders himself, after which murder? Yeah, after the fifth murder. And um, David Fincher says that uh, when he first read the script, he thought, okay, the movie is going to end now. Okay, <laughs> a fifth murder, and perhaps there won't be any two more murders. It's just that, but we know there are two more murders to come. Yeah. It doesn't really happen. So the, uh, you know, in a crime movie, you have certain expectations. The other way, we were, while discussing genres, we were talking about we expect certain things, certain conventions from a genre, rom-com, and an action movie. All these movies evoke certain expectations. A crime movie, a murder movie evokes certain kind of uh, expectations. That means that uh, we expect the policeman, after, after all Brad Pitt, are is, Brad Pitt is our hero. So, we expect him to catch the killer. It does not happen, he surrenders himself. Okay. So, that is an enigma. The movie plays on the enigma of the conventional genre. Okay. So, uh, the similarities between point of similarities between Somerset and John Doe, both painstaking, thorough, professional and intellectual, they take great pride in their professionalism. Interestingly, they have the same world view. They know that uh, uh, civilization is beyond redemption. But while Morgan Freeman looks at the world with kindness and compassion, John Doe's character is a, a more furious. He wants, uh, he wants to avenge himself. Okay, with, he cannot tolerate other people's weaknesses, impatience with imperfections. So, Somerset tolerates, Doe is intolerant. And of course, the movie also plays on the name John Doe. Is this his real name? But his real name is Jonathan in the movie. John Doe is an American everyman, the regular average guy. Okay. So, is he the regular average guy? That is another enigmatic code the movie uh, is interested in. Why this name? Now, the trope of an older black cop and younger white cop. We have already seen lethal weapon. Okay. And how does uh, seven differ from lethal weapon? <coughs> Danny Glover, Mel Gibson. What is the relationship between them? They are more like uh, friends. Okay. But here there are hierarchies. The senior and more experienced, more intelligent cop on the verge of retirement and the rookie, who is uh, uh, all brawn and hardly any brains. So, that uh, dichotomy is brought out very early on in the movie. It plays on the genre of buddy movie, that friends and both uh, Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt characters, they act as foils to each other. So, look at their initial interaction, it begins on a note of hostility, they do not like each other, they do not want to work with each other. Um, they dress very differently. One is methodical, as we have already seen, another is quite sloppy. <laughs> Manner of speaking, Morgan Freeman, very calm, very measured, very poised. Brad Pitt, on the other hand, cannot stop speaking, talking, the chatterbox, and most of the time, it does not make much sense. Okay. Uh, the library scene gives the game away, the difference between the two men, uh, emphasizes the difference between the two men very, very prominently, where uh, Morgan Freeman is able to decipher quotes from Dante's purgatory. And what does uh, Brad Pitt do? He is read, no, yeah, yeah, and he also reads cliff notes in order to understand Dante's purgatory. So, that is the difference between their intellectual prowess. So, uh, when we talk about study in binaries, it cannot get better than that, but I mean, we have been talking about chalk and cheese. 
and that is a trope of buddy movies. Again, lethal weapon also plays on these binaries. Brains and brawn, a relationship that begins in hostility, but ends up in mutual respect. There is a very interesting uh, uh, enigmatic scene. Many people like that. It is a rain sequence, city drenched in rain and uh, um, Brad Pitt chasing the killer and the killer almost gets him. Yeah, he puts the gun on his head, but does not shoot. He walks away. If you watch the movie for the first time, do you ever wonder what is going on here? Do you think that is an enigma there? Yeah, I mean you know uh, the killer if he wants, uh, if he is uh, after self preservation, if he wants to, uh, if he does not want to be caught, then why would he let uh, a very, very smart detective get away? He had all the chance, all the opportunity in, on, in the world to kill him, but he does not do that. And that is another enigma, why does not he kill? Brad Pitt. Why can't Brad Pitt, our hero, save himself? Why does not Morgan Freeman arrive from somewhere and save Brad Pitt? But Brad Pitt is saved by the killer, enigmatic. Why does the killer turn himself in, enigmatic? So, the movie plays on these scores. Any question at this point? I have been talking too much. Any comments? Anything that you can recall from the movie? The movie actually pits Morgan Freeman and uh, Kevin Spacey, right? And Brad Pitt is never brought out as a hero. So. Exactly. So, that, that's the point. Intellectually, they are on the same wavelength, Doe and Somerset. Yeah. Therefore, this younger hero, the rookie, it's uh, if you want to look at him uh, as a hero, well, it's a coming of age movie. Right? There is some learning that takes place, however horrific that learning. So, he learns a, a life lessons and he also knows why this particular horror was done to him. He realizes something about himself, something that we all understand, but we never feel that it is such a big um, sin that it should be punished so horribly. Okay, so, the movie actually pits some dough against Somerset, but uh, the uh, Brad Pitt character becomes a medium. First murders that is committed and after every commit, uh, after every uh, murder, he, the killer leaves his signature sign. He is trying to leave certain clues behind. So, gluttony, how does he kill the glutton? By forcing him to eat till his stomach bursts. They sloth where uh, the so called sinner is tied to the bed for one year. A beautiful ta woman taking pride in her beauty, her uh, um, face is cut off and then she is given a choice. If she wants to call for help, she will have to live with a disfigured face or she has the choice to commit suicide by taking pills and she choose the letter. The crucifixion, the, the signs all over Kevin Spacey's rooms, Kevin Spacey's room. Yeah. So, um, John Doe's first appearance, we see him at several points in the movie, but uh, we fully see him for what or who he is for the first time uh, as he surrenders himself. That again is a, a big reversal in expectations. We expect our heroes to catch him. The killer surrenders himself after five murders. He is covered in blood and later we realize whose blood it is. So, um, one uh, reason that uh, the movie was called the bleakest and the gloomiest film ever made. The reason was, I mean this is a BBC interview, BBC review where the, uh, the critic commented that by far this is the gloomiest movie 
he had ever watched. Now, what could be the reason for this? The movie offers us no hope. Generally, in a crime movie, in a thriller movie, we feel there are heroes to take care of the world. We are safe because there are heroes out there. We, we are safe because there are forces of law who are there to take care of us. What does seven do to these expectations? The killer is always a step ahead of the law. Okay. So, therefore, this is it, the film denies us any kind of comfort. There is no comfort in the movie because we know there is there is no hope for us, and that comes on uh, comes through very strongly in the movie by the way the killer is projected. So, Kevin Spacey surrendering himself, covered in uh, the blood of someone he has just murdered. When does this scene happen? The climax, yeah, when uh, the killer makes a request that he should be taken to a, yeah, to a certain point to find a dead body, yeah to find there are two more dead bodies and he is asking us to uh, and leads us to that and the heroes give in. Okay, that is also very interesting that uh, a dreaded criminal he has just been caught and the heroes uh, succumb to his demands. Uh, throughout the scene, throughout the car drive, we see Brad in conversation with Kevin Spacey. And through this grid, of course, you know Kevin is Spacey being a dangerous criminal, um, you cannot just keep him along with the hero. So there has to be some kind of a, uh, yeah, a barricade. But we also see Brad Pitt's character through these barbed wires. Not just Kevin Spacey, but also both of them are trapped in their own sins. Brad Pitt may not be aware of that. So these grids act as a very strong sign, a very strong index for telling us both these men are now on par with each other. Morgan Freeman on the other hand is always looking away, he is free, literally free. Um, some people have also, now I do not know how many of you paid attention to this aspect. Uh, see, Usually, serial killers are, if you take the statistics in the western world, more often than not, they are white men. So far, uh, we have not have any, uh, have not had any record of a woman serial killer. A woman serial killer, maybe women murder once or twice, but serial killers, uh, not many are aware of. Okay. So, uh, let me know if you are aware of uh, one, but then um, generally it does not happen. Um, statistics also prove that most of the time, at least 9 out of 10 times, these are white men. So, in 7, you do not have this. In, now, what do these men, um, what are these men after? What is the pattern? I mean, you know Jack the Ripper, white serial killer. Who did he kill? Okay. Um, so, there is a bias there against women of so called uh, not so good morals. So, serial killers have a pattern. They are usually, um, let us not call them insane people, but there is a strong sense of some injustice or strong sense of uh, um, restoring some kind of a moral balance in the society. And what, how do they restore these moral balance? By eliminating certain unwanted people. Now, who are these unwanted people? Jack the Ripper killed prostitutes, you know women of these women with uh, so called low morals should not be tolerated in our society. That is one pattern. 
what else? Who do they kill? Who else do they kill? Homeless. Homeless. Okay, homeless people, the very poor, the squalid people of the earth. We don't want them around. They are killed one after the gays. Children. Yeah, we don't want them around. They should be killed. One, I mean, in literature also we have had uh, several examples where literary figures have been killed because of their ambiguous sexuality. Lorca, for instance, a Spanish poet dramatist, he was gay, and he was murdered by uh, a fascist who didn't want such people to be around. So yeah, uh, people of color, perhaps we don't want people of certain race, certain nationality around. So there is a pattern. Is there a pattern in seven? Sinners, what he perceives as sinners. sinners. Only sinners, but if you look, if you forget the sin element, he is quite democratic. There are three women, four men, all whites, and he, the, he, the killer himself is a white male. But then what about his sexuality? And I quote, uh, la, a piece from the movie, the scene where he has just killed the wife, Tracy. And this is what he tells Tracy's husband as played by Brad Pitt. I tried to play husband. I tried to taste the life of a simple man. It did not work out. Now, what could it mean? I tried to play her husband and it did not work out. Yeah, some kind of perhaps repressed homosexuality, perhaps some kind of um, sexual inadequacy yeah. and it did not work out. So, I took a souvenir, her pretty head. Um, because I envy your normal life, it seems that envy is my sin. So, I need to be punished for that and who better than you to eliminate me, to murder me. And therefore, he wants to be killed. No, but he mentions envy. Uh, well, but uh, not according not to the canon. According to the canon, envy is a sin. Homosexuality is not mentioned, right? As a punishable sin, I am talking about the, the seven deadly sins. It is not there. Okay. It's some, uh, perhaps it is implicit in some way, but not very, very explicitly stated. No, I mean, can't it just mean that she did not cooperate? Hmm? can't just mean that she did not cooperate when he tried. Could be anything, could be anything. Therefore, we are saying ambiguity about his sexuality. Could be he did not try, he, could be she did not cooperate, could be he could not, he could not, uh, uh, you know, live up to the moment and therefore, he had to take out his. And of course, he wants to punish Brad Pitt. For what? Which sin is he being punished for? Right. And do you see elements of wrath throughout the movie? Where is it most highlighted, where John Doe decides this is the man I should be singling out for? Right. When he takes photographs okay, of Victor. Yeah, Victor, we, we have been misled into thinking, into believing that Victor is the serial killer. And when, they, when the cops are on the scene, John Doe is uh, somewhere in the background trying to take pictures and Brad Pitt explodes on seeing him and that is the point where the serial killer decides that this is an ideal victim for that. So, all these clues, you know you look, you need to read, you need to understand seven backwards. At first go, you won't understand all the enigmas which are implicit there. Any comments? See? Any questions? The entire movie is dark and gloomy, but the final climax happens in a very sunlit and very open space, mm -hmm. extremely open space. The movie actually begins in darkness, and as the movie progresses, it becomes lighter and lighter as far as um, camera work is concerned. But the tone of the movie becomes darker. Okay. So, it is a very dark movie, as we have been talking about. Although the uh, final scenes do take place in open spaces and in extreme light. 
there was actually a lot of controversy, lot of uh, conflict regarding the climax of 7. Um, David Fincher at one point really actually decided that he should go for a happy ending, you know, while the wife is being murdered, he arrives just in nick of time and says her, you know, he is the hero after all, this is what we expect. It does not matter whether he is a Bollywood or Hollywood, you know, the hero has to be a hero. Spider Man always arrives on the scene uh, at the right time. So, therefore, Brad Pitt should also, and they actually thought about it. Who put the foot, who put his foot down? Brad Pitt himself. He said, I do not want this. I mean, you gave me the script with a certain ending. I stick to it because the entire movie leads towards that climax. It cannot be any other way around. There cannot be a happy ending. Okay. Is John Doe a preacher? Yes. Yeah. Somerset actually says at one point that he is giving us a sermon. You can read through the clues that he leaves behind. Actually, Do John Doe is giving us a sermon. He is a preacher. And why do we call him a preacher? And why does he think of himself as a preacher? He sees himself as a moral voice of the society he lives in. He feels that someone has to stand up where the law has failed. So, he is the law enforcer in the society. And uh, at one point, he even justifies all the killings. He said, they were not good people. The greedy lawyer uh, was a villainous character. The woman uh, who he kills for lust, yeah. He has his own reasons for killing that woman. So, it is not like uh, he just killed in vain. He had re a reason to kill. His intolerance comes through. Okay. Um, he identifies with the moral code of society and which kind of society? A Christian society. So, that is where he, when we were talking about the cultural code in 7. So, unless you understand the moral codes in a Christian society, much of uh, the enigma, much of uh, the quotes which Seven talks about will be lost on us. And most importantly, he recognizes that like everyone else, he too is a sinner and he needs to be punished. So, he is not just a random uh, villainous character. He is a sinner, he recognizes that, he chooses the kind of death he should get, he chooses the kind of man who should give him that kind of death. Okay. So, um, as, a, as an exemplar of cultural code, Seven takes us on a journey into moral and philosophical territory. Debates over social responsibility and human nature. And the conflict is always between crimes against humanity and acts or sins against God, sins that offend God, those are the seven sins. So, Kevin Spacey's character refuses to see himself as an ordinary criminal. He is a law enforcer, he is the moral voice in the movie. According to him, uh, he is attempting to bring some sort of moral stability in our lives. And therefore, so while the from the detective's point of view, there is a conflict because murders after all, whoever you murder, it does not matter, murder is a sin, is a crime. But what he says, what Do John Do Doe feels is that he is punishing sins and therefore not committing any crime. So, between the nature of sin and the nature of crime, there is, therein lies the conflict in seven. Does Mill kill him? Does he kill him? How does the movie end? He gets taken away in a car. Who? 
Mills. 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 Okay. So Brad Pitt is taken away in a car. He has. We are told that he has killed um, Kevin Spacey. Uh, Morgan Freeman stops him from killing John Doe. Why does? Do you remember the reason? Why shouldn't he kill? Yeah, he doesn't want Kevin Spacey. Now we are no longer talking about the crime of killing a person. He is no longer talking about the law. He is talking in Kevin Spacey's language. Don't give him the satisfaction. He is leading you on. He has been leading you on and he wants you to do it, so don't do this. Okay. But then he does not again in the movie, while shooting the movie there have been some, there has been some kind of controversy whether Brad Pitt should eventually kill Kevin Spacey or not and they decided to, yes it should happen. Yeah, because then the crime, you know the seven murders are taken care of, otherwise there will be one murder shot. Okay, so, um, you have seen the movie. What has been your response to the movie? <coughs> what kind of feelings are you left with when you watch Seven? Was it the first time you watched the movie? Yes. You did not expect it. It hits you absolutely in the face and leaves you with a sense of hopelessness. There is absolutely no hope for us, except perhaps if you look at the older, wiser guy who just walks away. Uh, but, but then why, why is he still uh, able to retain some sanity? He has seen a lot of things, yes, but still. Yeah, the opening scene when we were talking. So, let me take you back to the opening sequence. Okay, he has managed to put aside, exclude all the unpleasantness thing, uh, events of his life from his life. So, he wants certain control over his life and that is some kind of a defense mechanism at work in him, which Brad Pitt lacks. Okay, so, that is a very important uh, lesson that seven teaches you. The ability, the, the ability to let go. Yes. All right. So, thank you very much.